as you can see behind me, it's quite snowy. It's important that I don't slip and fall. I paused there so that you had a chance to think of the next word I was going to say. In English, we have pairs of words that sometimes go together, sometimes with the word and, and they just naturally fit. When we hear them in English, they sound normal to us. They're called collocations, by the way. In this English lesson, I'm going to help you learn 12 English collocations that have the word and in the middle, and it will be like a little fun quiz. I'll start each segment by saying the first word and the word and, and then waiting to see if you can guess what the next one is, and then I'll explain its meaning. These are the windshield wipers on my van. When I turn them on, they go back and forth. They go back and forth. When you say in English that something goes back and forth, it moves in one direction and then it stops and then it moves in the other direction and then it stops and then it repeats. Windshield wipers are a great example of this. When I turn them on, they go back and forth. If I move like this, I'm going up and down. I'm going up and down. Probably the best example of this action is if you describe a really happy dog. When a dog is happy to see their owner, they often jump up and down. When I come home from work, Oscar especially will jump up and down. Walter doesn't jump as much, but Oscar definitely will jump up and down because he's excited to see me. So if you see someone or something moving in this direction, up, and then down, they're moving up and down. If you notice when I spin this, it makes a little bit of a funny sound. It's old and it has a lot of wear and tear on it. We would say that it has a lot of wear and tear. This is from an old piece of farm equipment. We're going to paint it to look like a flower, but it certainly has a lot of rust. And when it was used in the field, it definitely got a lot of wear and tear. So again, wear and tear would mean something that's worn out a little bit, something that's been used a lot. I think once we paint it though, and make it look like a flower, it'll look pretty cool. So I worked out yesterday and I have a lot of aches and pains now. I have a lot of aches and pains in my body. When you work out, it makes your muscles a little bit sore. And if you have muscle soreness or pain all over your body, you would describe it by saying you have aches and pains. But when you have aches and pains from working out, that's a good thing. That's just your body saying that you did a good job working out and you're getting stronger and in better shape. We have a drawer in our kitchen and we call it a junk drawer. It's a drawer where we don't put kitchen stuff. We just put a lot of odds and ends. We put a lot of random things. There's some old screws in there. There's a screwdriver. There might be some nails. There's some pieces of thread. There's just a random assortment of things from different parts of the house. And because we didn't know where to put them, we put them in the junk drawer because that's where we keep all the odds and ends. When I want to buy something new, I like doing a lot of research. I'm really interested in a lot of facts and figures when I'm thinking about buying something. Facts are things about that item that are true. Figures are the numbers. So let's talk about computers. A fact would be that it's the fastest computer you can buy. A figure would be that it has 64 gigabytes of RAM. So whenever I research something that I'm going to buy, I really like to know about all the facts and figures, the things that are true, and all the numbers that go along with it as well. Whenever I make a decision, I like to think about the pros and cons before I make that decision. Pros are the good things and cons are the bad things that might result from making that decision. Let's talk about learning a language. One of the pros of learning a language is that you'll be able to talk to more people. One of the cons is that it takes a long time to learn a language. So pros and cons, those two words almost always go together. Pros are the good things and cons are the bad things. So last week I did a lesson about things kids normally say. And one of the things that I think is very true about that lesson is the kids say these things again and again. We often put the word again together with the word again to describe something that happens repeatedly, something that happens over and over again. I guess we put the word over and over together too sometimes. Anyways, when you drive somewhere with a kid, they will ask the question, are we there yet? And they'll most likely ask it again and again. If you know someone who's going on a trip, 
you eventually want to know if they got to their destination safe and sound. Safe and sound is a little phrase we use to describe someone successfully traveling somewhere. You get somewhere safe and sound. When my mom went on a trip last summer, eventually she texted me and said, we got here safe and sound. It was a great trip. I'm enjoying just sitting by the pool with my cousin. So whenever someone goes somewhere, you always want to know if they get to their destination safe and sound. One of the nicest things a human being can do for another human being is to help them. It's nice to help each other. But every once in a while, a friend will help you and they'll do such a good job. You'll say that they went above and beyond. When someone goes above and beyond, they do more than what's expected of them. It's not just when you're helping someone. It can be at work as well. When someone goes above and beyond, the job required them to do this much work and they did like this much work. Often when Jenna edits these videos, she goes above and beyond and I really appreciate it. Thanks, Jenna. Sometimes at school, we need to move chairs or desks. We need to do some really difficult physical labor. And usually then we ask students if anyone is willing and able to help out. When you say that someone is willing and able, it means that they want to do it and they're also capable of doing it. Let me explain a bit more. A student that would help move chairs wants to help move chairs and they're also able to lift lots of chairs at the same time. They would need to be quite strong. So when you say someone is willing and able, it means they want to do something and they're also totally capable of doing it. Well, hey, thank you so much for watching this little English lesson about collocations that have the word and in the middle. I hope you were able to guess the second word in every situation. If not, rewatch the video and hopefully you can shout the word when I leave that little pause. If this is your first time here, don't forget to click that red subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, and I just hope you have a great week of English learning.